Hey everybody, welcome to Tutor Terrific. Starting a new chapter in my physics course, chapter four. It's all about forces. Today I'm just gonna give you a real intro into the topic of forces, how it plays into so many different uh, related topics in physics. It's super important to understand what's going on here. Um, we're gonna look at um, the types of forces. We're gonna look at Newton's first law. And uh, Newton has three laws, but we're gonna look at his first law as sort of a um, culmination of all we do today. So let's get going. So um, dynamics is the study that we're going to do. And uh, that's where forces lie under. So we study dynamics. That's what we're studying is forces. And I want you to understand how it fits into the larger picture of all of the studies in physics. Um, here we go. So here's physics. And if you break it down, there's study, like optics studies, there's mechanics, there's electricity, there's heat, and many more, uh, sound, light, lots of different things. Um, if you go under mechanics and you break that down to its various categories, kinematics is what we've done so far in chapters 2 and 3, studying motion, just the characteristics of motion specifically, um, how to model that motion. Dynamics is what we're doing now, and that's studying the causes of motion, not describing it, but uh, understanding its causes. So that's what we're going through right now. And dynamics also uh, discusses changes in motion, not uh, just the motion we see, but how it can be changed. Okay, so uh, just for a definition perspective, dynamics is the study of the causes of motion, namely the causes of the acceleration that causes changes in motion. Okay, so of course that begs the question, what causes acceleration or the changes in motion? What do you think, guys? Think about it for a second. What do you think is the cause of acceleration? I told you I told you the causes of changes in velocity was acceleration, but I didn't discuss what causes acceleration. Well, it's forces. Forces lead to acceleration. And I'm going to talk a lot about how that works in this video. Um, basically, in antiquity, you study this in junior high most likely, there are four fundamental forces um, in our universe. Um, one of the main ones is gravity. And gravity can act at long distances. Is, excuse me, uh, it can act at long distances, and it is quite weak. Um, then we have the force of electromagnetism, which can act at distances, but much shorter, and it's much much stronger than gravity in short distances. Um, the weak nuclear force is something that happens in the nucleus of an atom, and it deals with uh, different types of decay, uh, alpha decay, beta decay, as we see here. And the strong nuclear force, which is what keeps the neutrons and protons um, next to each other, and it's by far the strongest force at uh, the very small distances of the size of the nucleus of an atom. We're talking picometers here. Very, very small. All right, so those are the four fundamental forces. We're going to look at the top two in detail in this course. Now, let me uh, explain to you uh, through a couple videos how things can get so screwy when it comes to people understanding forces. Veritasium, I give credit to this next video I'm about to show you. Veritasium is a wonderful channel on YouTube. It's an educational channel like mine. He does great work. He made the, he, he was in Oxford and he uh, discussed this, uh, he did like a sort of interview of students on campus about forces. So let's go ahead and uh, take a watch of this video right now. What is a force? It seems to be an idea that a lot of people are confused about. It's like Star Wars is the only source of knowledge. What, what is, is a force? Um, it's what like, force? do you die? Force. Like, force is how you raise X-wings out of about. swaps. You, like you just Star concentrate. Is the only or would you say of forces? What is a force? Um, <laughs> like, but out, outside of Star Wars, a force is energy and mass. So if you have a huge thing moving really fast, you got a lot of force. Like getting hit by a truck, I suppose getting hit by this place. Um, force is energy, um, somewhere. Something that exerts energy on all other matter. The movement. The movement of something in one direction and something that exerts energy on the atmosphere 
Listen. <laughs> I don't know. It's sort of this indescribable thing that kind of keeps us from flying off into space. Nobody really knows what it's um, about. It's just a theoretical kind of thing. And that should teach me to interview philosophy students. But contrary to what you said, there were some people who knew what force was about. Something that makes something move from its original position. How you propel something, or how you get something to move, or how to shape, reshape it. what you said, there were some people who knew attraction or direction, or something that makes something like an object has on it. Yeah, push. Yeah, push. Or you <laughs> yes. Okay, it took some coaching, but force is essentially just a push or a pull. So then I asked people, what forces are acting on you right now? Most can identify a downward gravitational force towards the center of the Earth, but uh, then things got a little bit hazy. Can you tell me about the forces on you at the moment? Um, well, probably there's a big force uh, downwards right the center of the Earth. Which is uh, uh, gravity downward gravitational force towards Well, the gravity of Earth. But, uh, where is it? Where, where, how does it act? A little bit hazy. Well, it keeps me the on the Earth. The uh, it just uh, I don't I don't fly away. Well, I would be standing on the Earth force. and it's pulling me down and making sure that I'm stuck to the Earth. Yeah. Okay. Is, what other forces are on you? Are there any other forces on you? Uh, there are. There's air pressure forces. Well, the gravity of Earth. Uh, there's my own muscular forces keeping me up. Well, it keeps me forces, on the Earth. Things. Uh, and also then, uh, different, uh, sort of weather or climatic conditions. In terms of what, like wind, weather, that sort of thing, or just normal gravity? Uh, this is what's keeping me on the ground. Uh, it's like gravity. <laughs> so there's a gravitational force pulling you down. Yeah. Um, any other forces that are acting on you? The friction. Like on me right now? On you right now. I can't think of anything else to grab it. Only one force. Like, is, I mean, there, surely there's like a lot of small ones, but... Let, let, let me put this to you. If there's only one force on an object, what does it do? Uh, it goes towards it. But there is another force acting on you, which is a pretty important force. There's like, there's a force acting down, right? There's a gravitational force. What about a force acting up? I can't think of anything else to grab Only one force. No, no, a force is... Okay, so what forces are acting on you right now? If there's only one force on an object, what is it? Cool, so we'll go over those throughout the course, but um, he's talking about a very important upward force called the normal force, and many of you probably were like, ah, come on, students, get it! But um, we'll go we'll go through that. Don't worry. Um, I'm on another video. The Novel Learning Center has a wonderful channel on YouTube, and they've got a really good introductory video on forces. And so, I'd like to discover some everyday forces by watching this video. A force is a push or a pull. We can't see a force, but we can see the effects of the force. A force can move a stationary object, stop a moving object, or change its direction. A force can change the speed of an object, it can also change the shape of an object. A force is measured using the a force meter. The SI unit of force is Newton. There are two kinds of forces, contact force and non-contact force. When we push or pull an object, we have applied force to the object. The object will move in the direction of the applied force. An applied force is an example of, a con of contact force. Friction is also a form of contact force. Friction goes against motion. Even though friction slows things down and makes movement difficult, there are many things we could not do without friction. Friction holds us to the ground and allowing us to walk without slipping. Friction causes the car to break in time to accidents. The amount of frictional force depends on the texture of surfaces in contact. When the surface is smooth, there is less friction. The force that makes things fall to the ground is called gravity. Gravity is an example of non-contact force. Gravity pulls an object towards the line. 
the force of gravity also exists on the moon, but it is not as strong as it is on the earth. When an object rests on the, on the surface, there will, be, there will always be a reaction in force. When we are standing on the earth, the reaction force balances the weight of our body, so we don't fall through the pavement. The reaction is also called normal force. Magnetic force is non-contact force. Magnetic force only acts on magnetic objects. Iron, steel and metal are magnetic materials. The force of magnetic attraction pulls the magnet, magnetic object towards the metal. The interaction of forces makes the world we live in the way it is. The cycle on a bicycle experience the interaction of different forces. Gravity pulls the weight of the bicycle and the rider towards the earth, while an equal reaction force acts upwards to balance gravity. As he rides, the frictional force between the wheels of the bicycle and the ground acts against a force and doesn't go too fast. As a fish swims forward, water resistance acts in the opposite direction. While gravity pulls the fish towards the bottom of the water, the upthrust exerts an upward force that encounters gravity. In level flight, the upward lift applied to the wings of an aeroplane is equal to the downward weight of the plane. While the force forward thrust of the propeller is equal to the air frictional drag on the plane. All right, that was an interesting video too. That went through a ton of info that is going to take multiple chapters to uncover all that. But it was good to see sort of, you know, a youngster, even though he was probably reading from a pamphlet. It's nice to see sort of an overview. Forces, truly, the one of the most important things he said is that forces, truly, um, the way they interact with each other and us, dictates how it is to live in our world and how it is to, as a baby, learn to walk and learn to interact with the environment. So, but getting back to Veritasium's main point is that a force is most fundamentally defined as a push or pull on an object. Okay? They can, but don't necessarily cause acceleration. Now, I'll get into that because multiple forces can act on an object. They can cancel each other. So, while a force is the cause of acceleration, forces don't necessarily lead to a non-zero acceleration in every instance. Okay, one thing you've got to get used to about a lot of the quantities I introduced in this course is that they are vectors. Forces are no exception. Forces are vectors. Okay, if you look at the image, the sky is pushing up on this box. So it's an applied force, it's a contact force um, on the box in this direction. And uh, multiple forces can act on a single object, as uh, in the video. The upward thrust. Uh, I love that. I love his. I love his little uh, British accent. Um, so we've got weight downwards. We've got the gravity acting on the plane. We've got the lift due to the shape of the geometry of the plane and the wings. We've got the forward thrust due to the jet engines in this case, and we've got drag due to the air resistance. Those are all forces acting on the plane in the air. Now, some more about the vector nature of forces. We have to be very careful. Forces act on a particular object, but they also have a source object. Okay, So we've got to uh, talk about forces that act on an object by another object. Okay, Let's take the same image from the last slide. This uh, is a force on the box by the person. So the box we call the recipient of the force. That's where the force is drawn. It's drawn on the recipient. And the agent is the person exerting, or the object exerting the force, okay? So, um, we can add forces as well. So, multiple forces can add, like vectors normally add. These two ladies uh, are the agents of a force on this recipient here, this person. Um, they're acting at right angles to each other, and you would add those force vectors by any other method. The tail-to-tip method was used here. And the total force, as you can see, is at this 45-degree angle. And um, this right here, this free body diagram, 
It's a picture of all the forces acting on a particular object. We're going to talk about that in a later lesson in this chapter. But uh, that's just a preview. Forces can cancel, guys. Um, if you have two force vectors that point in equal and opposite directions, such, a, such that they're anti-parallel and equal magnitude, the net force, which would be the sum of all the forces, would be zero in this case. So the book would not move. Also, um, forces can act at an angle. Okay, We can talk about the direction of forces as some angle with respect to some other direction, like this being uh, this force at some angle, like 30, 40 degrees with respect to the horizontal. We're going to look at that for sure. Now, let's talk about some examples of forces. Here are two examples of contact forces. And this was in that video, the Novel Learning Center, contact force. It's a force that acts through the physical contact between objects. We have to have actual physical contact. Now, that is a gray area because that has to do with the electromagnetic force, repulsion between electrons. But uh, we're going to pretend like we're actually touching something to make that occur. Um, so here's some examples of those. And then there's non-contact forces. These are forces that can act at a distance. They do not require this physical contact. Okay. Now, the students uh, at Oxford, I, I believe it's Oxford, I'm not entirely sure, um, what forces are acting on you right now? That's the, f that's the last question that Veritasium channel creator had for you. Well, Everybody there was able to discuss gravity acting downwards. Um, and then we saw in the Nova Learning Center video, there is, um, oh, first let's talk about the agent, be the earth. The earth is uh, exhibiting this force on me, it's exerting the force on me, and I am the recipient of it. But there's um, an electromagnetic force due to the uh, very small distance between the electrons in the bottom of my shoe and the electrons in the carpet on the floor or the, the wood on the floor, wherever you're standing. Um, that creates an upward thrust, well, not thrust, an upward force that counteracts gravity, which is why you don't move. Okay? So the agent would be the carpet or the floor that you're standing on, and you would be the recipient. Again, I'm just drawing all the forces acting on me. Okay? Friction is an example of a contact force that acts between uh, two contact surfaces. And it, uh, these surfaces may be moving with respect to each other or not. They don't have to um, for friction to occur, and it opposes the motion of other applied forces. So if someone's pushing this purple box or indigo box to the right, the friction force will act to the left, opposing its motion. Someone's uh, pushing a, a lawnmower to the left, uh, the friction force uh, will be felt to the right, and it will po that's opposing the direction of motion, as this little guy says here. Okay. There are two types of friction. Static friction is the first type. It's friction between contact surfaces not moving with respect to each other. Okay, so if I push on this purple box and it's not moving, but I still feel some resistance, that's called static friction. And then there's kinetic friction, which is the friction between contact surfaces moving with respect to each other. So if I were to push this purple box and it would start to move, you might hear some sound. Um, You'll still feel friction opposing you, but uh, the, now it's kinetic friction because the contact surface between the table or whatnot and the box, uh, they're moving with respect to each other. Tension is another type of contact force. Um, it's exerted between uh, and along taut ropes, so ropes that are taut, not filled with slack, or strings. Um, it's a very interesting force because uh, Tension at one end of the top rope is different than tension at the other end because they're equal and opposite directions. The force is feel the magnitude is the same, but the directions the opposite. And uh, it's it's a it's basically it acts along the direction of the rope, as you see here. Now pulleys are very important when it comes to tension. We're going to be looking at a few examples of situations that involve pulleys in this uh, chapter. Um, a pulley is a wheel that spins freely. This rusty one probably doesn't, but let's pretend it does. Um, and it has a track that can be filled with a rope like this. Okay. Now, what do pulleys allow us to do? Why are they used in the industries? They allow us to change the direction of the tension force. Okay, That's the point. So now the tension force on this ball here points upwards, 
whereas um, the tension for me points at this angle. They're not equal and opposite anymore. And uh, in this case, they're pointing the exact same direction. You can get them to point the exact same direction with the pulley. So pulleys allow, a single pulley like this allows a change um, in direction of the force. You can uh, set up multiple pulleys to actually alleviate the magnitude of the force as well, but um, we're not going to discuss that in this course. That's a more of an engineering course. All right, and now we're going to look at the laws of motion. Okay, we're just going to get started, but these laws will be our foundation pieces for all of our uh, mathematical analysis in this chapter. We're going to start with someone named Aristotle. In the height of the Greek Empire, there were many great philosophers, okay, and Aristotle was one of them. Aristotle thought, he theorized, that um, a force was required to get an object to maintain a certain speed, and that no forces acted on objects that were not moving. So a force was required for an object to be moving at a certain speed. The greater the force, the greater the speed. Okay, so this is the understanding for a long time. Then this man, Galileo Galilei, comes on the scene in the Renaissance, height of the Renaissance. He stated, among other things that we've already talked about, in the last chapter that no, this is not the case. Forces are not required to maintain objects at a certain speed. The greater the force, the greater the speed. That is incorrect. Forces are required to change the speed. Okay? If no net force is acting on an object, it will maintain its current speed forever. Um, so that's in stark contrast to Aristotle's statement. And it turns out that Galileo was correct. His understanding led to this man's first law, Isaac Newton. Okay, now we're in the Baroque period. We're past the Renaissance. He's super famous for his um, uh, contributions to the uh, mathematics of calculus and to physics equally. He stated that, um, that uh, what Galileo said was true, and he gave it, and he reframed it slightly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare you for that first law with a definition, inertia, okay? Inertia is a property of all objects with mass. It's the tendency for an object to remain at a state of uniform motion or rest. So objects like to maintain their current state, whether it's moving with respect to you or not moving with respect to you, okay? The more mass an object has, the more inertia it has. And inertia is a way to measure an object's resistance to acceleration, which would be changes in its motion, okay? Um, so this little pebble here, for example, will have some inertia. It'll resist my hand maybe picking it up very slightly compared to, for example, Jupiter. Jupiter has a lot more inertia than that pebble, and so it's going to resist changes to its current motion much stronger than that little pebble, and that is... Uh, has to do with directly the fact that Jupiter has more mass than the pebble. And now, let me, I'm prepared now with all of that to state Newton's first law, which really reframed Galileo's understanding and rebuttal to Socrates, uh, excuse me, Aristotle. Every object remains in a state of constant motion or rest unless a net force acts upon it. And this is also called the law of inertia because the inertia is that thing that likes uh, causes the object to want to maintain its current state of motion. We work against inertia when a net force is placed or acted upon an object or exerted on an object. So we're going to look more at this and his other two laws coming up in the next few lessons. Thanks for watching this one, guys. This is it for lesson one. Look forward to the next video soon. This is Falconator, signing out.